Okay, greeting guys. Welcome to another episode on your Dr. DIY's channel. Right. So in today's video, we are going to demonstrate a tutorial on how you can fabricate a pin hammer based on raw material given such as cast iron. So this is the basic setup. Obviously, this setup is just to mimic the actual fabrication process which will take place in the workshop using a typical milling and a turning or lathe machine. However, due to this MCO and everything is need to be done online, so we will demonstrate here how it can be carried out. So your visualization should be very good and hope you can understand this video. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, so before we can proceed with the fabrication process demo of the pin hammer, we examine the engineering drawing which has been provided in your lab sheet at page 4 respectively. Okay, so if you refer to this drawing, you will see there is two important components which is A and B. A is the pin hammer handle bar with different diameters. Okay, you have the first section where the diameter is 16 mm. The second section, the diameter is 14 mm. Last but not least, the last segment, the diameter is 9.5 mm. And this segment is also very important because you are going to carry out a trading process using a typical die operation of a 3 over 8 inch British standard fine method. Okay? So this is the this is the standard you are going to use to do the trick on the handlebar. Then coming to the pin hammer head. Okay? This is B. Yeah? So the second component you are going to fabricate is the hammer's head. So the length of the head is 60 mm, where the height is going to be 15 mm, and from the base to the to a length of 30 mm, you are going to make a true hole of diameter 8 mm through through the hammer's hand uh, handle head. Why? This hole is going to be a threaded hole using tapping process of 3 over 8 inch British standard fine method. Okay, the hole is going to be 8 mm. So I will put a link in the description to this video on how a typical tapping and a die trading operation can be carried out because they are using special tools. Right? So moving on, just for your additional knowledge, if this is 8 mm and if you want to perform a trade okay of 7 mm so if your trade is 7 mm you don't drill 8 mm right you got to drill it smaller so you got to preferably drill it to 6 mm because the difference of 1 mm will give you the tolerance to do the trading. Right? So this is the general rule. Lah. Okay? So if now it is 8 mm, which is after you have done the trade, so meaning which before doing the trade, you have to pre drill this hole, nothing close to 8 mm. Meaning which. 7 mm is okay, 7.5 mm is okay, right? But not 8 mm because if you make it 8 mm, you will never be able to do the trading for 8 mm because the tool will just go in straight. There is no any uh, shearing operation to do the trade. So I hopefully you understand the, the mechanism. 
Coming to the hammer's handle head now, you can see there is an inclination here of 30 degrees. So you are going to mill this towards an 30 degrees angle and this is a chamfer. Okay, so this is a chamfer. So bear in mind, this segment B is going to be fabricated using a typical milling process. Okay. So this is going to be done using a milling process. And for the hammer handlebar is going to be done using a typical turning process or a lathe. They are the same huh? process. Okay. So milling process is carried out for milling flat workpiece. Example components of your engine components, your engine block, the engine cover. Okay. These are applications where milling process is of importance. For turning process, you are going to fabricate or it is used to fabricate cylindrical components like shaft, bearing, handlebars, bushes, okay, pistons, automotive rims, and so forth. Right? So I hopefully you got the application. Now we move on to the next step. So in a nutshell, this is a fabricated a hammer or a pin hammer which actually this is what you are going to do all right so let me just go through briefly so this is the ham the hammer's handle bar and this is the hammer head okay so you can see the trading operation has been uh, carried out here <coughs> so you simply just screw it in to the hammer's head okay so you tighten up following a clockwise direction so when you tighten up how good is your thread very easy you just take your hand you put on the hammers hand uh, the head and you just slightly move it if the movement is small meaning which your tolerance is small and your dimensioning or your machining is good okay if the movement is you can see if the movement is a uh, is very big so the, the, the finishing of your thread is not that good, okay? So the tolerance is very high. So this is what you should uh, note, okay? So you just simply just screw it in until you can, until the gap is, is reached, okay? And obviously on top here, if it's coming out, you need to make it smooth by means of milling. Okay, you can mill it, make it smooth. So, you will notice that this is uh, basically uh, shining okay uh, please bear in mind that upon <coughs> upon fabrication of uh, pin hammer you will be given a cast iron raw material which we will discuss in, in a while so this cast iron basically it will corrode or it will rust very fast due to the humid which is available in the air okay so in order to prevent such after you have milled your hammer or your workpiece you may do a post processing what is post processing you may further enhance the material surface by means of sandpaper okay you polish it using abrasive sandpaper of different grades the higher the number of the abrasive paper is the more smoother the sand or the abrasive paper is so upon doing that you may spray it or if you want you may cut you may paint it if you want you to maintain the look of the iron what you can do you can polish it using a metal polish or a typical polish which is available in the market is known as auto salt okay so uh, let me see whether do i have yes i can show you so this is the typical polish 
right outer sole so this is a polish where you can polish on the surface of the material okay metal polish one tube is about seven to twelve ringgit okay depending on the shop you go is made in germany it's a very good polishing agent for almost all type of metals right and you will get a smooth fine shining surface <coughs> So this is the hammer bar, <coughs> so the workpiece which you are going to produce. So you will be given a raw material of a cast iron block. Following to that, you will also be given a cast iron cylindrical bar. Obviously, this bar is small. Okay. So. <coughs> Obviously, this bar is small and this cast iron material is thin. It's just for illustrative purpose. Okay, so you'll be given something like this and you have to mill it and lay it according to the engineering drawing which you have. Right, so first I will just roughly explain, briefly explain on how the, 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 the handle bar can be fabricated using a typical lathe or a turning process okay so you must understand that a lathe machine does a turning cut okay such that to produce any sort of cylindrical the uh, workpiece such as shaft okay dry shaft of your automotive bearing linkages bushes which are round okay uh, you may produce such a cone okay to hold any workpiece or any cutting tool so uh, pistons car pistons car automotive uh, rims and so forth so anything cylindrical is always produced using a typical lathe process or turning process right obviously we are doing everything in manual Okay, but if you go there and you work in the industry, everything will be carried out using a computer numerical control machine where you you do the cut using coding, which we will learn later in your CAD CAM. <coughs> then, this bar, you're going to further reduce it to the dimension as per your engineering drawing. So, you are going to now imagine this cordless drill, okay, so you are going to imagine now this cordless drill is your typical lathe machine okay your typical lathe machine and this is the holder to hold your workpiece so this is known as a chuck okay you have similar like this in your lathe machine but on a large scale so what you do is you gently open up the chuck because there is a jaw here okay and then you place your workpiece inside the chuck and you tighten up the chuck for the jaw so in this case i have tightened up okay upon that you roughly on your machine to see whether your workpiece wobble about its axis so in this case it's satisfactory if it wobbles about its axis meaning which the applied force or it is not installed at the center line of each CG so you might want to reposition your your installation by removing and by just putting it back and installing so you will have uh, holes like this to put in the tool the tightener to tighten up this chuck okay in this case I'm just using hand eh? so how is going to go now you have already settled your work piece or your raw material which is the cast iron bar to the lathe machine so now you are going to perform the cut obviously the cutting tool have already been mounted at the lathe machine in this case we are going to simulate the cutting tool using a pen knife if you can see my pen knife now <coughs> okay <coughs> if you can see my pen knife <coughs> it consists of two important components the cutting tool holder and the cutting tool itself 
right so a cutting tool will have its specific cutting tool holder okay it is not universal lah. it has a specific cutting tool holder so in this case this is the cutting tool holder and this is the cutting tool so the cutting tool will be mounted at the machine or the lathe machine such that when you on the lathe machine this is how it will move the lathe machine basically is stationary yeah? it doesn't move about any axis only rotate about the center line of your workpiece which is mounted in the jaw or the chuck of the turning or the lathe machine so the cutting tool now will come when you when this is on it will come and it will touch and obviously it will remove the material has you slowly bring the cutting tool towards the CG of your cylindrical bar okay so this will be done and your cutting tool will move in y direct in x direction sorry okay it will move in x direction and it can also move in positive y or negative y direction or negative x or negative negative x or positive x direction okay you can move in four different ways to remove the material as per your engineering drawing so what you will have eventually let me just bring it to the end of the handlebar now okay so look at the end here so the end here consists of several diameter okay you have the large diameter you have a small diameter you have a, a, a groove and followed by another dimensioning so this is how it goes okay so this is deeper inside and so forth right now that is the whole idea on how you are going to fabricate the hammer's handle bar okay <coughs> the hammer handle bar and just take it out so end of the day this is what you are going to do you will get this right obviously when you get this it will be rough by need by by default it will be rough due to the cutting forces applied which is not uniform why not uniform because it is handled by a human so sometimes you may apply a, a five newton torque then later you might apply another another five newton so it will be 10 newton so the cutting tool forces is not constant so you will get uneven surface so you can correct this by the post processing by sanding and so forth right so this is involving a uh, human labor uh, i mean human this is some sort of human error also okay so that is so much on your turning process okay for the pin hammer fabrication now we move on to the milling machining works okay so for milling process <coughs> we are going to produce a hammer head okay with the dimensions as per your engineering drawing which is given in your lab sheet page 4 right so this will be the outcome and the raw material given obviously will be a cast iron right so from this cast iron you are supposed to mill out the hammer head okay so roughly i just want to inform that the the diameter of the, the screw or the thread here is m9 okay m9 if you are using metric standard okay so when you want to do the trading you have to buy a the, 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 the tapping tool of m9 right so they will have an m9 and you do the relevant operation so m9 is basically using metric standard huh? right right so for milling process now you need to imagine that this is the machine this is the machine okay and the machine obviously have a 
a jig or a holder where it holds the cutting tool. Similar concept, the cutting tool consists of the cutting tool holder, right, and the cutting tool itself. For this case, the cutting tool is a drill bit with a specific diameter. So in this case, is a 7 mm drill bit. Okay, for illustrative purpose, I'm just showing you. So this is the chuck. Okay, so for 7 mm drill bit, normally the chuck will be for 8 mm. Why? Is to cater the clamping force for this drill bit. Okay. You cannot use a chuck of 4 mm because it will not be able to go in, or you cannot use a chuck of 10 mm. It will be able to go in, but it will not be able to clamp this guy, this cutting tool. Okay, so you got to use 1 mm difference. So if this is 7 mm, here maybe it will be 8 mm or 7.5. So what you do is you gently screw this anti clockwise. You can see the jaw is opening. You gently put in your work or your cutting tool in okay so your cutting tool goes in nicely and you secure it by turning the screw clockwise to lock it okay obviously this is all done by hand for illustrative purpose okay when you are using the actual machine it is not done by hand you have all the tools to secure it tightly okay you'll be using all the hand tools and the machine tools itself so upon insert of the cutting tool to the cutting tool holder, now you put it in the machine. So assume or visualize this is your milling machine. So this is how it will look like. Okay, so this is the milling machine. So this is the cutting tool. So the milling machine will be able to move in certain direction. For your case, the milling machine itself will move in your positive Z direction and negative Z direction and you also be able to tilt it. Okay? In this case, we are not going to tilt it first. We are going to maintain a 0 degrees angle so it is perfectly straight. And then you are going to clamp your workpiece to the wise the wise of the machine which is installed on the machine's bed what is the wise it looks something like this okay so you are going to clamp it by means of clamping your workpiece in the wise itself so assume your workpiece have already been clamped securely right and you have already drawn out the dimension of the hammer's head which you are going to mill, right? So, on the machine and roughly the machine will touch the... You on the machine, the, roughly the machine will touch the workpiece and it will start to mill. So, this will basically go in at a certain depth, okay? So, they call it depth of cut. You have to obey the depth of cut. If the depth of cut is 1 mm, you cannot go more than 1 mm because you will spoil the cutting tool. The cutting tool might break. So, there is an indicator when you bring this thing down. So, you set it to one, a negative 1 mm. So, this guy is going to go in and it's going to mill the entire surface of 1 mm. Then, you proceed or you repeat this order until you get the hammer head. Right? And then, if you want to mill this guy now at an angle, okay, if you want to mill this guy at an angle of 30 degrees, simply just tilt this cutting tool, right? So, when you mill, it will look something like this. So, you will get the chamfer here. What about the hole? This is easy. If this is M9, obviously you are not going to drill M9, right? You must make it smaller by 1 mm. Why? Because that 1 mm will be the material which will be machined out to form the trick. Okay? Using a typical tapping process. So that is the basic logic of it. 
right so i repeat if you want to make a m5 hole m5 means metric 5 mm straight you have to drill m4 you have to drill 4 mm right so you have a difference of 1 mm you can use it to do the trick you cannot make it big huh? the thread will not will not be able to be done so this will be your hammer's head which you have machined obviously after machining you will have a lot of debris and a lot of uh, 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 surface roughness okay so you got to further post process it by means of cleaning it polishing it okay sanding it with appropriate abrasive paper and then you might further finish the the surface of the material by maybe you can apply a thin layer of oil to prevent it from from rusting and so forth okay so the edges you may uh, make it blunt because if it's sharp it might hurt anyone so you can make it blunt by filing and so forth okay <clears throat> so this is the operation of the hammer handle head so assuming you have already done the threading now okay so just simply install it sorry just simply install it so this will be your final workpiece which you will mill in the workshop okay okay so as far as your lab assignment is concerned you are supposed to produce a hand tool of your selection okay hand tool can be anything like a you know you got a clamp this is also a hand tool okay you got a clamp and then maybe you can have a cutter right you got a cutter anything of your choice so that is your task However, due to the limitation of your movement, of our movement due to the recent COVID-19 pandemic attack, and we are now bounded with the MCO implementation by the Malaysian government, so things are easy. You are supposed to use any sort of deformable material. So what is deformable material? They are material which you can use, you can cut it easily because they are low in density to form your selected hand tool, right? So, example will be lay a, a sheet of a rubber material with a thickness which can vary, right? You may use this. These are example of deformable material, okay? You may use typical insulator sponge okay normally this type of material is used to insulate the copper piping of your house air conditioning system okay from further condensation and to increase the efficiency of your cooling rate so these are this is the example of the insulator you may use this okay maybe has the handle or the holder okay based on your creativity you may use a polyfoam board. This is a polyfoam board. If you have one, this is very good because this is waterproof and easily shaped by means of taking a pen knife and just cutting on it. Okay? You can use a pen knife, cut on it, and then you can get the shape which you want. Waterproof, the surface is smooth and is easily deformable based on the cut you perform. Right, this is a poly foam board of four or five mm thickness. If you have this, right. Additionally, you may also use acrylic material. What is acrylic material? Example is your car number plate. You know, you have the black number plate, the black plate. That plate itself is an acrylic material. So, if you have a broken 
plate, you may use that plate okay, to fabricate your selected hand tool. Another one is a PVC vinyl. Okay, uh, this material is also deformable. You look, okay, its thickness of two mm, and at the back of it, it's already been installed uh, adhesive material. You just simply pull the, the 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 paper, okay, and you can stick it. So you may cut according to whatever dimension you want. This is easily available in your local Mister DIY shop. Okay, one piece is about two ringgit. It's very long, huh? So I've already cut just to show you. Okay, so there's a sort of texture here. Okay, you can bend it, no problem. Okay, you see, you can bend it, it will not break. Okay, so if you want to cut, you just perform a line using a pen knife and then you may cut it. So these are examples of a deformable material. Another one is obviously the most common one, which is a plywood. Okay. So a plywood basically you can do various things with it. You can draw and then you can cut. Okay, if your drawing is a uh, curvy, so you may cut using a uh, hacksaw, or if you have an electric jigsaw, you can use it to cut. But please bear in mind you got to be safe when you're using all the tools and all that. So wear appropriate safety gears like your hand gear. Okay, all fall under the PPE category. So safety gloves safety mask okay when the noise is more than 60 decibels to 70 decibels it will cause uh, annoying in your hearing so you got to wear ear plugs and etc so these are example of a plywood okay so this is also one deformable material another one is i want to show you now is a uh, stereo foam Okay, this is also available in most of the supermarkets there with different thickness, right? They use this for many uh, purpose or many application, okay? For um, craft, craftsman, ship, okay? You can use, normally they use this as the base of the aquarium. When you want to put your aquarium, they put this down and then they place the aquarium on top. So this stereo foam can be cut using a scissors or a special cutter which you have a heater on the line and then you just cut you may purchase that online Shopee or maybe Lazada or so forth okay or any other platform so this is also one of the deformable material okay so why are you going to use this deformable material I repeat because they are low in density so when it's low in density it is easy for you to work with to shape it so in the industries, in today point of time, priority is given for material which is low in density. Why? Because low energy is needed to machine the surface. When low energy is needed, low power consumption, hence the utility cost or the operation cost will be lowered. However, obviously you got some drawback because the strength of density, the strength of material with low density relatively is much more lower than the material having high density okay so for example if you compare a titanium to a cast iron so which is strength full in its application most strength it has more strength okay in terms of mechanical properties obviously you will have the, tit the titanium will, will, will win because it is light in weight and it is very strengthful that's why it is used in the aviation industry okay compared to cast iron so guys this is a general preview on your actual lab task which you are supposed to do to produce a pin hammer so we have shown you roughly how you are going to do that so upon understanding that, if you got any doubts, please leave your comments in the description at the video to this. Upon that, I've also explained how you are going to carry out your task in forming a desired hand tool of your choice using a deformable material which is available within your reach. Okay, so look around <coughs> your house or your environment 
If you have any top type of uh, deformable material or any other material, it can be a ready-made bar, it can be any sort of material uh, or product. Or, okay, you just have to utilize your creativity and to produce your desired hand tool, which is part of your lab assessment for workshop technology in producing this pin hammer so with that guys i hopefully you understand and you enjoyed the video and i hope you are safe in this crucial time please take care of yourself stay indoors till we meet again checking out now from dr diy's channel stay safe have a blessed day thank you